Hello guys, welcome to Code with BK. So in this video, we'll see how to check if an integer is a Krishnamurti number or not. So in the first half, I'm going to explain you this problem. We are going to see the steps on how to solve this problem. And in the next half, we are going to look at the codes. So if you are someone who is just looking for codes, there are links to the codes in the description of this video. You can check that out. And if you are somebody who wants to read and understand, there is a text explanation to each of those attached code as well. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. So what is the Krishnamurti number? For example, if we have an integer n, I take example of 145. We find the digits of this integer. So 145 has digits 1, 4 and 5. We find the factorial of each of its digits. And you know what a factorial is? So n factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 till n minus 2 into n minus 1 into n. Using this, we have 0 factorial as 1. This is by definition and factorials are only defined for values greater than or equal to 0. Okay, You can Google proof for this and this. 1 factorial is obviously 1. 2 factorial is 1 into 2. 3 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3. 4 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4. And 5 factorial is so on. So we find the factorials of each of its digits and then we sum it. Okay. So if this is equal to the original value of n, which is 145, then this is a Krishnamurti number. So 1 factorial is 1 plus 4 factorial is 24 and 5 factorial will be 4 factorial into 5, which is 120. So this is equal to 145. So 145 is a Krishnamurti number. So let's write a pseudocode now. So we have function is Krishnamurti number. Takes an integer n returns true if this n is a Krishnamurti number, else it returns false. So the first task is to make sure that we have a function that calculates a factorial. So I'll simply write a pseudocode here. So I'll say function factorial of n. So this is the pseudocode that finds the factorial of an integer n. And as I said, n is defined for greater than or equal to 0. Okay. n if in this case is going to be 0, we are still going to get 1 because we start with i as 1 and less than or equal to n. So if n is 0, this loop will never run and you get 1 as the return value. But you can maybe add an if condition on top, say maybe if n is equal to 0, you return 1. Okay. This is visually more clear to read, right? So that you are handling the case for n is equal to 0 separately. Okay. Even though it returns the same value, depends upon you. So now what we have to do, we have to break this integer into digits and then find the factorial of each of those digits. I've already posted a solution where I break integer into digits. You can check that out. I will use the pseudocode from that solution, okay? And modify that pseudocode to work this out. So writing the pseudocode for it. So this while loop prints all the digits of this integer, okay? The digits are printed in reverse order. That is, it is printed from right to left because we are removing units digit in each iteration. So for this 145, you get 5 printed first, 5 is removed first, then you get 4 is it printed then, okay, and then finally 1 is printed, okay. So the order of output for this will be 5, 4, 1 if you print D in each case. So if you look at the solution that I posted to print digits, I use an array digits to store these digits which are extracted. So why do I use an array to store the digits? Because I am getting the digits in reverse order. I want to print them in original order. So for 541, I want to print 145. So what do I do is I store these digits into an array and then print this array in reverse order. This gives me the digits in original order in the integer. But in this particular problem, all we need to do is find the factorial of each of these individual digits and add it. That is adding 1 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 5 factorial is the same as this. Okay. So the order in which we extract the digits does not matter. So we simply add the factorial of the current digit to a recurring sum which starts at 0. So this will store the sum of factorial of individual digits. Then you need to check if this s is equal to the original value n. But after the loop, n goes to 0 because stopping condition is n not equal to 0. So we store n in a temp value. So we set n back to m, okay? And then we check if the calculated sum is equal to the original value. n we return true, else we return false. 
So this is how you check if n is a Krishnamurthy number or not. So this is our pseudo code. Okay. Let's try run this for 145. So you have n as 145. Okay. So you have n as 145. Then you have s as 0 to begin with. You have temp set to 145. The condition n not equal to 0 and d. We start with this n not equal to 0. n not equal to 0 is true. We find d is n percent 10. n percent 10 gives you the unit digit. So 145 percent 10 gives you 5. You say n is equal to n by 10. This is integer division. You only got the quotient. Don't get the remainder. So you get 145 by 10. You get 14 stored back into n. You add factorial of d to sum. Factorial of d is factorial of 5, which is 120. You add it to sum. Sum becomes 120. Okay. You go back to check for while loop condition. n not equal to 0. 14 is not equal to 0 is true. You find d is n percent 10. d is n percent 10, which is 4. You find n is equals to n by 10. Integer division by 10 gives you 1. 14 by 10 gives you quotient 1. Remainder is lost. Then you do sum is equal to sum plus factorial of d. Factorial of 4 is 24. You add that to sum. Sum is 120 plus 24. You get 144. You go back to check for while loop condition. n is not equal to 0. This 1 is not equal to 0 is true. D is n percent 10. n percent 10 gives you 1. You do n is equal to n by 10. 1 by 10 integer division gives you 0. S is S plus factorial of D. Factorial of 1 is 1. You add that to sum, you get 145. Okay. You go back to check for value condition. n is not equal to 0. n is not equal to 0 is false. Okay. You come here, you set n to 10. n became 0. Now n is set to 10. n becomes 145. 145 is equal to sum is true. You return true. And so 145 is a Krishnamurti number. Let's check this for 0, right? So if n is 0, your sum is 0, your temp is 0. Okay? 0 not equal to 0 is going to be false. So this while loop never runs for 0. Then you set n to temp. Temp is 0, n is 0 still. Okay? Then you check if s is equal to n, you return true. n is 0, s was 0 because n was, s was initialized to 0. This loop never ran. So this is true and you return true for 0, which is wrong. So what do you do in this case? You simply write and if case that if n is 0, you set sum to 1. Else you do this while loop thing because if n is 0, you have one digit which is 0. 0 factorial is 1, you set sum to 1. So in the problem where I explain you to extract digits of an integer, I give you another method where you convert integer to string. So if I have 145, okay, you can convert this to 145 and print each character. So you get 145. So if you do this for zero, you get zero. Okay. And zero, when you extract this single character, you get zero factorial as one. So you don't have to worry about zero in this method when you use strings. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. So please do like my video and subscribe to my channel and let's move on to checking the codes now. So this is the implementation of the solution we just discussed. I have written a function is Krishnamurti number that accepts an integer n turns true if this integer is a Krishnamurti number. Otherwise it returns false. Sum is going to find the sum of factorials of individual digits. I have taken a case for n equal to 0 separately where I am setting the sum equal to 1 because 0 factorial is 1 and I am doing this because this while loop method will not give me 0 as a digit. So my sum will remain 0 whereas it should be 1. So I'm taking n is equal to 0 separately. Else if n is not 0, I'm using this while loop method to extract digits, find their factorial and add them to a recurring sum. Before the while loop, I set temp to the value of n and after the while loop, I set n back to temp because using the value of n in this while loop, n goes to 0. Finally, I return the value if sum equal to n. So let me run this Java C Java. Okay. Let me take another example. 40585. Let me run this. Okay. So you can check that the sum of 4 factorial plus 0 factorial plus 5 factorial plus 8 factorial plus 5 factorial is going to give you this number. So this is the implementation for the alternate method to check if an integer n is a Krishna Muthi number or not. I have again written a function is Krishna Muthi number that accepts an integer n returns true if this integer n is a Krishna Muthi number. The difference in this method from the previous one is that we use strings in this method to find the digits of this integer n. We convert integer n to its corresponding string. We iterate the string. 
we extract each character at i8 index in the string and then we convert that character to its corresponding digit. The part where we find the factorial of the digit and add it to a recurring sum remains the same. Finally, we check if sum equal to n or not. In this method, we do not take a separate case for n equal to 0 where we set sum equal to 1 because when you convert 0 to its corresponding string, you get something like this. So when you iterate the string, you get 0 as the only character and when you find 0 factorial, you get 1 as the answer. So sum is automatically 1 in this case. So let me run this. I have Java C, Java and true. Let me take that other example. Okay. Let me take 0 as an example to make sure that 0 is not a Krishnamurti number. Okay. So I hope this video was helpful. So please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. And please let me know in the comments if there was anything not clear to you in this video, if there is a concept you want me to discuss or if there is a question you want me to solve. Thank you.